Welcome, dear listeners, to another episode of Free the Bishops. I'm your host, Carmelite Quotes, and joining me today is the wonderful Rosary Mom, as always. How are you doing today, Mom? I'm really well, thank you, Carmelite. Glad to be here, although the news we have to discuss today is quite concerning. It really is. You know, today we're delving into an article from the Nicaraguan independent media outlet, Café Con Vos, that sheds light on the recent banishment of Bishop Rolando Alvarez and Bishop Isidoro Mora, along with 18 priests and seminarians by the regime of Daniel Ortega and Rosario Murillo. So let's dive in. You know, this article from La Prensa highlights the regime's desperation and its attempt to silence the resistance of Bishop Rolando Alvarez. In fact, their strategy of sending religious figures to Rome was something that they recycled after having done that in October. And it's a clear indication that the regime is indeed feeling the pressure And it also raises questions about the legitimacy of the charges brought against Bishop Rolando Alvarez. Absolutely. You know, following our conversation in episode 19, our last episode, with Latin America expert Caroline Cowan, the Ortega Murillo regime obviously now is installing clergy who are favored by the regime and perceived to be compliant with them. Caroline also mentioned, as you'll listen to episode 19, you'll see that she mentioned the similarities between Nicaragua and China. In other words, it seems that Nicaragua is adopting the Chinese model of governance when it comes to the Catholic Church. Yes, indeed, Carmelite, and we know what the Chinese model of the church looks like. The Nicaraguan independent media outlet La Prensa recently published an article describing Ortega's plans to adopt the Chinese model. In Nicaragua, Daniel Ortega's aggressive approach towards the Catholic Church raises concerns that he aims to secure an agreement with the Vatican mirroring the Chinese model. This model allows authorities to appoint bishops, offering a way for Ortega to influence the Nicaraguan Bishops' Conference with priests sympathetic to his regime. China's similar agreement with the Vatican, which is effective since 2018, has allowed both the Chinese government and the Catholic Church to appoint bishops, some of whom are closely aligned with the Chinese dictatorship. That is a very good point. You know, Ortega's dictatorship has established close ties with China since formalizing relations a year ago. The article from La Prensa suggests that China, which is known for its global religious persecution, might be advising Ortega's regime how to pursue an agreement with the Vatican akin to the one that they have in China. And the provisional agreement with China resulted from lengthy dialogues and decades of failed attempts, and it signaled a complex process that could potentially influence the appointment of bishops in Nicaragua. And while the details of the China-Vatican agreement remain undisclosed, speculation suggests a selection process involving candidates presented by both parties, and the article highlights the Vatican's stance on leaving the final decision to the Pope emphasizing the provisional and experimental nature of the agreement. Now, the Vatican's historical dialogue with China reflects a strategy to avoid exposing Chinese Catholics to greater difficulties and reprisals, with the aim 
of eliminating illegitimate or clandestine bishops in China, which draws parallel between China's past persecution of bishops and priests and Ortega's actions in Nicaragua, emphasising the Vatican's pursuit of dialogue as always the preferred alternative. You know, those are some of the same forecasts that Caroline Cowan made in episode 19. And Café Con Vos quotes an anonymous local analyst who suggests that the regime's actions have backfired. It makes them appear cruel and irrational. And even Pope Francis, in an interview last March, likened the actions of the Ortega regime to those of Hitler's repressive forces. And the regime's image is, is taking a bit of a hit globally, and this banishment was not a quick fix. It reflects the, the regime's struggle to handle the situation and the church's voice and the church's resilience. That's now, right. And the yes. actual... Go on. Yeah, I'm, the... Forgive me. I'm so excited about this. The fact that the church... <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. Chat a voice. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> the article it delves into the events preceding the banishment, and um, the regime's release of the photos, proof of life, of Bishop Alvarez, seems like an attempt to control the narrative because we know that the photos were all propaganda and he didn't look healthy at all. Absolutely not. And you know, this only raises more questions, doesn't it, Mom? Yeah, for sure. Why, why show a supposedly guilty man in varying states of health or unhealth and dress differently every time receiving medical attention? You know, it's a bizarre narrative. Very bizarre. And also the December raids on the priests suggest that the regime was escalating its tactics perhaps to exert more pressure on the Pope to order Bishop Alvarez's release and reassignment from the Matagalba Diocese to the Vatican. That would make the regime appear to be compliant with the Pope's wishes instead of the regime taking all the responsibility for banishing Bishop Alvarez. I'm glad you mentioned that because in the Pope's statement during the Angelus prayer on January 1, he exposed the regime even further. D do you remember what he said? Here's the statement. He said, I have been following with deep concern what is happening in Nicaragua, where bishops and priests have been deprived of, deprived of their freedom. And I express to them, to their families, and to the entire church in the country, my closeness in prayer. I also invite all of you present here and all the people of God to pray insistently, while I hope that the path of dialogue is always sought to overcome difficulties. And then he closed by saying, let's pray for Nicaragua today. Now, despite denials from Madame Compañero Rosario Murillo, the Pope's concern for the situation in Nicaragua made headlines. It does indeed. And the Pope's call for dialogue is crucial because it emphasizes the need for a peaceful resolution to the crisis, something the regime seems reluctant to pursue. Very reluctant. And let's not forget the U.S. government's recent inclusion of Nicaragua in its blacklist, quote unquote, on religious freedom, and that added more pressure to the regime. And Pope Francis continues to express concern about the situation calling it a crisis with painful consequences for the Nicaraguan society. Here's what the Pope said to the members of the diplomatic corps accredited to the Holy See on the 8th of January. The situation in Nicaragua remains troubling. A protracted crisis with painful consequences for Nicaraguan society as a whole 
and in particular for the Catholic Church. The Holy See continues to encourage a respectful diplomatic dialogue for the benefit of Catholics and the entire population. There's that word dialogue again. You know, the specialist who was quoted by Café Con Vos suggests that the Pope's emphasis on dialogue did provide the regime with an opportunity, literally one they couldn't afford to miss. And it remains to be seen what this dialogue will look like in the future. Nevertheless, the repression against the Catholic Church in Nicaragua continues. And that's what we're going to talk about in our next episode. I think this all needs prayer, don't you, Mom? 100%, we must pray. So let's turn in a moment of prayer now. And today we'll be leading day seven of the Novena to St. Therese of Lisieux. And we begin with a reading from Psalm 143. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Now let's listen to St. Therese as she reflects on this. In Story of a Soul, Chapter 11, St. Therese writes, Even though I had on my conscience all the sins that can be committed, I would go, my heart broken with sorrow, and throw myself into Jesus' arms, for I know how much he loves the prodigal child who returns to him. It isn't because God, in his anticipating mercy, has preserved my soul from mortal sin that I go to him with trust and love. Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, remember your promise to do good on earth. Send your shower of roses in abundance on those who call upon you and obtain for us from God the graces we are waiting to receive from his infinite goodness. And so again today, we pray for the continuing needs of the persecuted church in Nicaragua. We give thanks for the release of Bishop Rolando Alvarez and Bishop Isidoro Mora, and for the priests and seminarians who were detained with them. But we also beg you, St. Therese, to intercede for the conversion of hearts in Nicaragua's leadership, especially for Daniel Ortega and Rosario Murillo, that religious freedom may once again prevail in Nicaragua. God our Father, you have promised your kingdom to those who are willing to become like little children. Help us to follow the way of St. Therese with confidence so that by her prayers we may come to know your eternal glory. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rosary Mom. And to you, our listeners, please share this episode, share our podcast, and don't forget to subscribe on Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, iHeart, Google, CastBox, and you can subscribe by RSS feed too. And we'll be coming soon to Apple and other platforms. So please stay tuned for our next episode as we continue to bring you the latest events concerning the anti-Catholic persecution in Nicaragua. Now, thank you all for listening, everybody. God bless. God bless.